I'm uh, happy to talk today about this announcement that a new era is beginning. We've been having the 1111 portal at the beginning of this month and the 2211 portal, uh, 2211 yesterday. And um, it's amazing to see how the energies are clearing, unfolding, upgrading in between these two portals. And it's no wonder that we are finishing completing this program right before Thanksgiving and right at the completion of the evolution of these two portals. Um, I'm proud to tell you that I've been uh, monitoring um, the upgrade of the planetary grid or the energy grid around the planet for quite some time now and uh, the pranic festivals that we did and the other retreats that we've been doing uh, were meant to work with this planetary grid and to work with the sacred sites of uh, our planet uh, and especially the country I'm in, Romania, uh, in order to upgrade and harmonize the energies of this area and of uh, Gaia. Today we're also speaking about the power of sacred sites and how to work with them and we are opening this topic in preparation for the retreat of next weekend or next week where we are mm, joining to go to the uh, Romanian Sphinx so the retreat is called the Romanian Sphinx activation and um, we work with the sacred sites around it as well but specifically with the Romanian Sphinx because we are having a uh, beautiful task of um, tuning in to the sacred site and downloading the light codes for its uh, expansion as well as our expansion. So you learn to work with sacred sites, you learn to, to work with uh, the elements of um, Mother Earth, you know, uh, earth, water, fire, wind or air and um, ether in order to amp up your energy, in order to balance the elements in your own body and to feel nourished and healed if required. You also learn how to uh, get in touch with ancient civilizations or, say, or uh, advanced civilizations, either intraplanetary or exoplanetary, what we call ET, because they are willing and ready to get in touch with us and it's only our openness and readiness that could call them in and open up the gates for this communication. So if you are willing to learn about it and uh, meet your soul family, your star family, <laughs> then join this retreat with us. You can join uh, live, of course, in Romania. There's still a, a few days until our, we begin. So we begin on the 28th of November, five days to go. Uh, and you can also join uh, online the meditation that we do for the Romanian Sphinx activation. So that's also available. Uh, there's in the link that you have in the description of the video and in bio, you also have that event. You see uh, Romanian Sphinx activation and you'll be able to join the event and let us know if you need to come because we only have one room left and um, we can only um, host you if you tell us about your participation real quick. Uh, working with Sacred Sites has um, upgraded my evolution exponentially every time I visited one of them and lately my life has been all about uh, visiting Sacred Sites, working with Sacred Sites all over the world when I, whenever I'm called to join a certain gathering or to travel by myself to a certain place I'm doing it because I know this is something that's necessary and beneficial for myself as well for the planetary evolution. And um, the um, activity that you can um, assist to or monitor in the sacred sites is the equivalent of quite a few years of spiritual practice, if not lifetimes, depending on the power of the sacred sites you visit. 
because there are places on this planet that can harmonize and heal your entire system in just one visit. So that's the that's the power that I'm referring to. And I know this because for more than 10, 15 years, this, is main, this has been my main work. And uh, every year we've been organizing retreats and um, trainings to the sacred sites of Romania, India, France, uh, England, and so on. So I've been having quite a blast with the... <laughs> dancing with the ley lines of Mother Earth and joining beautiful gatherings as well uh, that were maybe not organized by me but supported by me in uh, other places, uh, power places of the world like the pyramids in Mexico, the um, sacred sites of um, Brazil, the uh, beautiful places of Thailand and many, many, many other places that uh, I could tell you about. Uh, we must be aware on our pranic journey, on our spiritual journey, we must be aware that the planet is made of chakras and uh, ley lines and um, power places just as our bodies are made of energy. Um, knots, the chakras that we have, and nadis, the energy channels in our bodies, and the uh, specific points in our body where the nerves are joining and so on. So we, our bodies are the equivalent of the body of Gaia. They are connected to the body of Gaia, and every time something is um, disharmonized in Gaia's body, either a specific energy point or a chakra or too much petrol being extracted or uh, the air being, um, you know, polluted or anything like that, that is directly affecting our chakras, our bodies and our uh, energy field and our health. Um, we can notice specific uh, behaviors or patterns in uh, the in specific nations or areas according to the ley lines and chakras that are on the body of Gaia in that specific area. For example, in the US where there's the root chakra, uh, everybody's running after in the, the definition of success is to have a lot of money, to have a lot of um, power in terms of monetary power and to be recognized as a rich per rich person because that's the pattern of the root chakra and that's how everybody interprets being on earth they are interpreting it through the filter of root chakra um, in England uh, we have the heart chakra in um, India, we have the crown chakra in uh, in Mount Shasta, so in um, in uh, in the Himalayas. Sorry, so that's where the spirituality is highlighted. And if you look at the um, Indian and even Tibetan people, um, their uh, material possessions and interest for richness is decreased. Not that there's anything wrong with richness, you know, I like to have all my chakras active and empowered and uh, having lots of money is just as powerful as having lots of spiritual realization. And one of the spiritual realizations is that wealth is our divine nature. But in India and Tibet, as I was saying, people are highly uninterested in spiritual possessions. They are mostly poor um in terms of the large masses, and they are not interested in pursuing um, material or financial success the way Americans do, because they are situated at the crown chakra of the planet, whilst uh, USA is, are uh, at the root chakra. So the difference in concepts and ideologies between the two populations are greatly influenced by the um, the chakras that are uh, connected to that. Uh, also, the example of Egypt where um, 
the the throat chakra is situated for example in in mount sinai and the pyramids uh, that's where most of the high end uh, spiritual uh, practices are coming from if you look at egypt they gave us a lot of uh, knowledge about the energy bodies about the uh, transfer transformation and transmutation of energy they gave us a lot of information about ancient civilizations even though because you know the the throat chakra of the planet has been blocked for quite a while the um information about the ancient civilizations and sacred sites has been a lot you know misled a lot and falsified a lot so not all of it or most of it isn't true but now that the throat chakra of gaia is opening you can notice a lot of information on sacred sites and ancient civilizations and ancient spiritual practices and ancient methods of healing even you can notice it springing out including the ability of being nourished by prana the ability of being source fed the ability of not necessarily needing physical food for nourishment but having access to the ether element which is nourishing our body which is correspondent to the throat chakra that i was mentioning so all that information comes on the planet right now with the activation of the throat chakra with the activation and clearing of the pyramids and mount sinai area so everything is connected like that and the planet is one large living organism with a very high uh, consciousness spirit containing it that is uh, highly influencing as i said our behavior our mentality our programming our spirituality and our energetics so visiting sacred sites working with the natural elements spending time in nature i call it gaining time in nature is crucial for our spiritual evolution and for the beautiful harmonious flow in our bodies as well so we have the possibility to um, have our body nourished in a different way we have the possibility to have our body healed in a different way we have the possibility to communicate as i said with with ancient civilizations with advanced civilizations when visiting these sacred sites with a, which are portal between worlds that's why we've been hearing that in certain places of the planet there are gateways to shambhala well shambhala is not a place is a state of being and um, it can be accessed through heightening our consciousness and in these sacred sites our consciousness is naturally heightened it's naturally upgraded we have a natural opening of our energy field the natural opening of our heart and therefore we are accessing this state which is called uh, you know the access to shambhala and we have then access to uh communicating with advanced beings or visiting worlds that are beyond our sight and that's what people generally call shambhala but they are actually multiple cities that are in the spiritual realm either beyond or within the earth that you can actually learn a lot from because these asian civilizations have overcome the limitations uh that humans are now confronted with and have um attained the state of spiritual balance as well as uh, abundance and autonomy that humans are just now um aiming for and unfortunately many of us aren't able to many of of, of people aren't yet able to access and the access to that state of autonomy is through accessing our full energy and knowing that we are meant to have free energy we are meant to have um free access to all resources because we are citizens of the galactic um uh, realm and everything is free <laughs> like look at the energy of the sun the sun never charges you know for what 
he emits or look at um, everything that emits light naturally or emits energy naturally it's freely available and therefore our nourishment should be also freely available the energy for our cars and transportation in general should be freely available our uh, energy the energy that we use for heating our houses and powering up our light sources and devices should also be freely available because naturally it should come from the sun and the fact that we're still extracting energy from the earth is equivalent to what we do in our bodies when we still extract energy from food when we are ready to move into a higher paradigm into a higher state of consciousness where we're able to extract the energy directly from the vacuum or the ether or the pranic field the quantum field then we're, we're once we do this in our bodies and we fully stabilize in it and then we can replicate it for our devices and transport and everything else we use. So the technology we're using on this planet right now it is a consequence of our state of consciousness. And that's how it is in any civilization. We're only given access to the technology that we can use harmoniously. If, we're, if people are still involved in power games and fighting over resources and scarcity uh, programs, they do not have access to free energy because they're not in the consciousness of it. Once you replicate that and stabilize it in your body and you're sure that you can have access to it, then you no longer uh, need to use um, devices that um, use a third-hand uh, resource but you can use devices that are directly tuned into source and into the primordial energy of the quantum field of the, or the vacuum, right? So there's a direct connection between the two, our state of consciousness and our ways of using resources in our body and the way we're resor using resources outside our bodies for devices, houses, and everything we need energy for. And hopefully, as I am receiving now, the world is ready for freer energy. It is ready for accessing a new state of consciousness where we are uh, autonomous or uh, less dependent of external sources and we are ready to access more freedom. Why? Because apparently we have moved into a higher state of compassion and kindness. We have moved into a higher state of uh, mutual understanding and mutual collab collaboration. Even though maybe it's not visible so far, even though maybe uh, some are still focusing on conflict and the uh, wars and separation games that are playing on this planet, in the subtle field the energy of peace and uh, the end of conflict has been stabilized and it's not long until it will be stabilized in the physical plane in our social realities in our personal realities in our families in our day-to-day -day life and so on so once you trust that and say yes to it and i'm curious to know how many of you are ready to say yes to such a reality once you trust that and say yes to it, then you're ready to transcend into a new era that I'm talking about. And that's the new era, an era of autonomy, an era of freedom, an era of uh, richness and abundance for everyone, not uh, based on discrimination or, or, or social status and so on and an era of mutual acceptance and embracing of each other each one of ours um you know preferences habits sexual choices and so on because that's also now a source of conflict on the planet and the more we have understanding comprehension compassion for the choices of another being you know as long as it doesn't directly hurt us the more we are able to be free. Our freedom 
is generated by our lack of judgment, not by the external factors around us. The, er the external factors around us are actually changing based on our inner emission or inner dynamics. And our lack of ju judgment and our uh, understanding and embracing of other people's choices, if they are, you know, um, not hurting us directly, is the key for our freedom and for their freedom as well. Very simple um, way of moving from a state of conflict to a state of harmonious and mutual understanding. So the question is, are we ready for this new era? Are we ready to, to interact with the planet in a mutual beneficial way, in a way that is supporting this planet as well as supporting our well-being? Are we ready to work with the sacred sites, ley line and chakras of the planet in a way that is no longer looking at drawing energy from Mother Earth, but mutually exchanging, mutually beneficial exchanging energy with Mother Earth. Are we ready for this type of harmony? That's the question for today. And uh, type yes in the comments if you're ready for it. Uh, whenever you watch this video now or in the time to come, just type yes in the comments to say yes to this uh, new possibility, new beginning, and new era, and that's what stabilizes it on the planet right now. So uh, thank you for watching this uh, brief um, intro and the uh, beginning of the webinar of the Prani Process Online, which is also called the beginning of a new era. I'm gonna um, now move with our meditation to the participants of this gathering. So we're um, now working with the people that are already subscribed to this class. If you want to be in this full program, please type yes in the comments and we're gonna um, send you know send you the link to participate in it full on because we still have about half an hour or so of meditation and pre presenting new ideas um we're meditating today as i said with the tibetan bowl of the root chakra but also many other bowls that i'm having around here that are working on various levels of sound healing so that's what we're doing towards the end of the webinar. And of course, um, there's a payment involved, but you can do it later. If you type yes in the comments, we include you in the video. And then later on, you can make um, a donation. Thank you all for being here. And remember that you can join us on Monday for the Romanian Sphinx Activation Retreat or Tuesday at the latest, because on the 28th, which is, which is Tuesday, we have the, the actual visit to the Romanian Sphinx or the meditation with the Romanian Sphinx if the weather is uh, not allowing us to go up there. And uh, this weekend on Sunday, we have cacao ceremony with um, sound healing and ecstatic dance. So because it's full moon, we're having a manifestation meditation, of course, uh, doubled by the power of sound healing, cacao ceremony, and ecstatic dance. Actually, it's not doubled, it's at least quadrupled. And uh, we invite you all either to participate live in Brashov or online via uh, Zoom or YouTube, where you can um, listen to the meditation, listen to uh, all the uh, sound healing therapy that we're doing, and participate at the end to, with the ecstatic dance. Um, the link to all these events you can find in the comments below this video if you're on Facebook and in bio if you're on Instagram. So, Cacao Ceremony, Ecstatic Dance and Sound Healing on Sunday for a full moon. And then on the 28th, which is Tuesday, we have Romanian Sphinx activation, a retreat of three days here in Romania with online participation to the meditations. And we meet and go to the sacred sites of Romania and we work with amazing, amazing, amazing energy vortexes. So come join us for 
energy upgrade and stepping into a new era. Big hugs, much love. See you soon whenever you are. And those who are on, on Zoom and you